Hello, good morning. We are going to take a look. Oh no, where did my guy go? There he is. Always think I got it ready, but then not quite, eh? All right. Anyhow, today we're going to look at a... Uh, it's pretty interesting, actually. There's a few things going on, but it's mainly about the slotted arc and uh, a little bit of motion control. So let me fire up this here. So these are the pictures. Um, let's go big. And what's going on, this is a uh, component of a uh, clamshell bucket, which is kind of, here's a bunch of different varieties of clamshell buckets. So it's a version of this. I'm just showing you this because I don't have any other far away outpicks. These are all hydraulic versions and different types of versions. So this is the version we're looking at and the interesting part about this one is here's the one side of a clamshell bucket is that it has these slotted arcs that a pin in the uh, bucket rides against so at one side of the arc, the bucket is in a fully closed position. At the other side of the slotted arc, the bucket's in a fully open position. Here again. That would be on the back side, so this is a fully open position. And the pin would be over to here, or to here, and then fully closed the other way. So we have some measurements and some distances here. Here's a good um, showing the uh, pin. So as this moves up, this pin travels this direction. So let's uh, remake this in Fusion 360 and we can kind of prove the slot in our repair piece because it's uh, wallered out pretty bad in the actual piece. So proving the geometry correct is kind of important because you don't want it uh, binding up because it'll just rub, rub whatever's the uh, least hard down. Okay, here's more pictures of the bucket assembled. You can see these two shafts are constrained in the middle. Some other measurements. I'm going to have this to the side when we're uh, putting this together and here's some other measurements. All right. So I'm going to put this to the side here. Uh, put this to the side. And we'll start developing this. So we'll start with sketch. I'm going to put it in the XY plane just out of habit. And let's start by putting a center line in here. I'm not sure how long or whichever, but let's get a center line in there. I can always use origin as a center line, but I just I want to put one in here. And let's start drawing some circles for these pins. So let's draw that those center pins that everything rolls around first. And I'm going to just flash a picture here of the uh, bucket again. So in this bucket, you can see in the fully closed position, this pin and this pin are perpendicular to the bucket being closed. So we can draw that. So let's draw another pin out here. Um, we want these pins to be equal diameters. Perfect. And we want these pins to be three quarters of an inch in size. Okay. Uh, 
Now I'm actually going to do another center line this way. Perfect. And I am going to con coincident constraint these to this line just because I don't want them moving around. Now let's mirror this one with this mirror line. So we have a few measurements that were given. So let's take a look at those. Here's this picture again. So between this pin and this pin, it's four inches. And between the pins, it's two and an eighth inches. So we can start doing that. We'll dimension these. Two and an eighth. And we'll dimension this again to here, four inches. One other thing I want to do is I want the center line constrained to origin. There we go. So we have that geometry. So from here we could probably start just drawing a one part of the bucket. So I don't know how big this puck bucket is, but I'm just going to make it up. Um, let's say it's about that big. Perfect. There, let's get a few more constraints here. When those buckets are closed, let's say there's probably just a little bit of clearance there. Let's say uh, 30 seconds. Let's say a 16th, so a 32nd on either side of the line. So almost closed there. I put a little radius here in the corner to the tangent line so they won't crash when they're rotating. Um, and then this outside needs a, a pretty extreme radius. Sure, that looks like the good beginning of a half of a bucket here. I'm going to extrude some of these pieces. And let's put it as quarter inch. All right. Oh, excuse me. Let's extrude again, but this time let's make sure we just make this thing a component as we're doing it. Quarter inch. Okay, I'm going to extrude again. I'm going to highlight that sketch so I can see it. I just held down my left click so I could uh, select that profile underneath everything. And let's put a little bit of a pin here. I don't want to cut it, I want to join. And I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch. I'm not gonna draw the entire bucket, I'm basically just gonna draw a cross section to the end where the working bits are. So this would be the uh, long rod that passes right through. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. And now I'm going to extrude what's going to end up being these uh, center bits. Let's go 7.5 that way, but we're going to go both ways. And let's go three inches that way. Perfect. And again, I should have made that a uh, new component. Two sides. Oh, did the 
that's wrong. And again, you, if you don't select no no component there, that's one of the rare times you can't just go back and fix it. So here, I'm just having a little bit of an issue here. My selections. All right, and we'll do it as two sides this time. And down here under operation, we will do new component, perfect. Okay, I'm going to join these together for the sake of uh, what it looks like in the photo. So let's get the photo here again. You can see that there's this plate welded between those two axles here. Or I wouldn't call them axles, those two pins. So uh, let's start a new sketch right here. I'm going to project this, 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 this. I'll project this and this. put this perfect little dirt catcher in here. <laughs> Let's extrude that. We're going to use the single line extrude. And we're just going to join that. I don't know what's going on. Why do I have a uh, ad going on? Usually that's ad free. Okay. So there's two pieces of our assembly we're working on. So right now, if we want, we could, uh, I could go to assembly. I could go to as built joint, which means I, I don't need to worry about location. It's already where I want it to be. And I'm going to select these two components. Revolute. Perfect. Okay. And I'm also going to make sure I ground this component because it's the non moving rigid component of this assembly. So I'm going to ground it. There we go. So now I can move this bucket component on here. All right. So now what we will do is we're going to start working on the, uh, let me find it here again in my notes. We're going to start working on this piece, the actual piece that has the slots in it, this component. So let's start working on that. Right, I'm gonna project this, this, that. Okay, everything's projected. All right. So we had a bit of a angle coming out of this line here. So let's put that in. I know it's going to be tangently constrained, so let's do that. Move. I'm going to put a line down here parallel with everything. I'm going to make it a construction line. And I want this tangently constrained, or uh, coincidentally constraint to it and then there was a measurement in here that kind of showed that length let's see if we can find it right here so about five and an eighth for the length of that 
slot from up here. So how am I going to make that work? It was about five eighths higher than where this intersection point is going to be. So let's go right across with that. Offset minus five eighths. I'll show you where that measurement is, um, and it's not going to be perfect. But here's that five eighths. Let's go back and do an arc now. Three point. Make sure I selected that correctly. Three point. And then I will tangently constrain these to here. All right, I want to make that a real line. Perfect. So in this distance from here to here is about five and an eighth. So let's put that in. All right. And I have no idea what this angle pitch is, so I'm just going to eyeball that. And I, it's still going to work fine. All right, let's mirror this line. Okay, so let's bring up our picture again so we kind of know what we're doing here. So that's that little v notch we're working on currently. So there's a line that juts off like here. I don't, don't really care about the angle. I'm just going to, uh, oh, off this circle here. Let's put just basically a random circle that looks decent right now. I'm gonna come off here and just put in a couple random lines that are very close to what we want. We want this tangently constraint to here. I'm also going to put a, we want a radius at the bottom here. So I can uh, tangently constrain these to our three known factors. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I think I want this line also mirrored for how it looks in the picture. Here, I'll put up the picture again. You can see what we're doing. So I'm going to mirror now this line here over to here. This is that starting of that slot. We don't have it over here yet. Um, this is that round bottom here and I knew that we were five and an eighth at the bottom so I just did tangent constraints so that would always remain um, proper. Okay let's move this over. I'm gonna go to mirror and we'll use this mirror line here if I can. That is not the line. Cancel. I don't know if it'll let me use that line. Mirror. I'll have to project it if it doesn't. Yeah. Okay, project. There we go. Now let's mirror. Okay. So now there was a measurement where this eye hook was up here. Let's grab that measurement. Uh, it's this picture here. So way up above, there's an eye hook. It sits at about 13 inches from where that arc starts. So let's uh, put something in there. I can represent that. Actually, I could just offset a line. Let's offset this line. 
13 inches minus 13 or I guess I could hit flip okay let's see can I extend this no I'm just going to put another center line in so we're all good okay there's a bit of a hole up here this ends up being tangently constrained to here this hole I figure is about equal to these size holes so let's make them the same okay and we're gonna come straight down off here and then at some point in here these two attach let's go back to the picture see what we're doing so this is a little bit longer than that so let's uh, adjust that a bit about as good as we're gonna get it for right now let's uh, mirror some of these pieces we don't have on the other side currently all right okay and let's extrude again just kind of keep everything consistent and we'll make this a new component okay all right so now we have something that closely represents this object we're trying to make I'm just gonna put it up beside it for a sec so you can see where we're getting at so the dimensions are pretty close to what's given or as close as I could get it given what I had now let's try to figure out the slot and there's there is some geometry involved and uh, let's do it so from here I don't know why these ads are coming on I used to never get ads on this a little bit irritating actually there change it up just gonna make sure it's royalty free stuff all right so I'm going to figure this component's going to move up about four inches based on some of the pictures. So I'm going to move this component. Up four inches. All right. And you can see from the photos that four inches let me grab the photo. Just trying to find one. Yeah, there. You can see when it's pulled all the way up, you can see these little spikes just hang just below it. So that's, we're getting close to a pretty good representation. So now what I want to do is I've moved that up four inches. We'll consider that our up upper limit of how much we're moving up now I'm going to rotate this I'm going to rotate this to the point where I figure it would be open enough and gives me about the same clearance as shown in the picture like I don't know 70 75 degrees maybe 70 degrees So let's say it's 70 degrees there I just moved it a little bit 70 looks a little bit better a little more meat now let's just do 75 75 is fine perfect so 
we've moved it 75 degrees. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut. I'm going to capture the position and I'm going to cut. This is my target body. This is my tool body. I want to cut operation. I want to keep my tools. Click. So now let's move our stuff back. And you can see we have a another hole here. Okay. I'm going to move this back. All right. So let's create another sketch and we're going to work on that slot capture position. Project. So the interesting part about this geometry is that it is actually the radius from here to here. But how we get that is we got this great circle tool over here. Let me zoom in, which is called the three point circle we can use. And we can go one to the center of this radius, one to the center of this radius. Oops, and then I needed one more circle out here. Let me just do this first. Get these other circles on here. Actually, it's just eight. Excuse me, I'm getting it all. So I'll just write in what the radius is. I know I can measure it here. It's four inch radius. And I'm gonna write in an eight inch diameter here using the three point circle tool. Circle, three point circle tool, center, center, and eight inches. And now I can go create arc, three point arc, here to here to the middle to that radius I have going on. And I'm just going to do a slightly bigger slot than our pin so we have a little bit of slop. Okay. And now I will extrude that. There, so I've cut a slot now. And if I move this now, it's not going to do anything because it's not attached in any way. But what I can do is I can go into assembly and I can go enable contact sets and I can go into assembly, new contact set, and this and this are now contact set together. That means all the Pieces that hit each other, or any contact pieces, will be recognized by the program when we do motion. So let's do some motion here. We're going to move this up, and you can see it's driving that pin up to our 70 degree point. Okay, let's put that back. Let's do the other side of the bucket here. We'll use a uh, mirror tool. And we're going to mirror components. This component. My mirror face, I can select. Uh, so we did everything off of uh, origin. I can use the origin plane as a mirror face. Okay. 
There, so now we have the other side of the bucket and let's add some joints, as built joints. This on this and in the middle. Yes, that's how we want it to move. And we also want to add a new contact set. This and this. All right, now let's move. Oh, cancel. Well, you can see why it wouldn't move because we enabled contact set and I hadn't put this relief slot in there on this side. So let's, uh, let's fix that. We'll go to uh, mirror and this time we'll mirror a feature and that feature will be that slot we put in right there. Okay, and we'll use the mirror plane as that same middle plane. Perfect. And we'll get rid of this little leftover. There. All right, let's move this now. Let's see what kind of function it performs. I gotta get rid of the sketch so we can see it. You can see as we pull up to the four inch mark, Nice. Oh, that's working uh, working fine. So it it ends up being that this slot's arc ends up being through these two arcs that were developed in our motion study, and then it's the radius between this pin and this pin. All right, hopefully uh, you learned something from that and enjoy. Oh, hi, Jim. I see your chat on my stream. I don't usually look down there. If those pieces cl collide, would the motion stop or would it allow collision? Um, so that is when we look in our motion study and we're talking about all contact, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about pieces collide. So right now I have a... Um, a contact enable contact between this piece and this piece and this piece and as I move up here let's move up again as I move this up this component here the gray one you'll see this pin will actually you'll see it get to one side of the slop and hit against the, the rail in here see Yeah, well, it's kind of on the one side of our slop that we made. It's riding right on that edge. And then as I come down, it'll do the opposite. Because there's that built-in slop. I could limit that for sure. I just did that just so we could see what was happening. And you can see it actually didn't have motion contact to these pins, so it goes through them. So I could do that too if I wanted the contact set not to hit those pins that go down too far. Sometimes it can get off there. Okay, so what I can do too is I can go here to uh, new contact set between here and these pins as well. Get rid of these sketches. Now if I move this, it won't go past those bottom pins either but it's a it's a pretty interesting problem all right thanks for watching take care